Hey everyone, it's Vaughn, the founder of Bora Mastery. Imagine if you could sit down with one of the world's most respected and revered ballroom dance champions of all time. What questions would you ask him? What would you like to know that would directly impact and benefit your dancing? What would you like to know about his likes and dislikes in modern dancing? And how would you like to know how the past has shaped the present and where the future of ballroom dancing is going? Well, I had the great honor and privilege of sitting down with Anthony Hurley, a name synonymous with great ballroom dancing throughout the world. He's won every title you can imagine with his darling wife, Faye. As an amateur, he was the UK star, international, British Open, European, and World Nine Dance Champion. As a professional, he was a four-time Grand Slam winner, a British star, UK, European, and World Professional Champion, which of course includes the prestigious Blackpool Dance Festival. And not only this, his legacy and contribution to ballroom dancing is gonna directly benefit and impact us for the rest of our lives. He's updated Alex Moore's ballroom technique. He was the former chairman of the Imperial Society of the Teachers of Dance faculty, an honorary president of the Ballroom Dancers Federation, a founder and honorary president of the BDF International, an honorary life member of the Imperial Society of Teachers of Dance, the WDC, the World Dance Council, and the British Dance Council. He has seen, witnessed, and studied every champion since 1949. He is himself a technical genius, a master of ballroom dancing musical movement, and a legend in ballroom dancing. I invite you to sit down as I interview the one and only Anthony Hurley. What is easier? A dancing partnership or a marriage, and why? Well, you're asking me uh, a very good question there. I said, but I've, I'm, I'm very proud. I mastered both. <laughs> yes. Right. Uh, married for 60 years next year. Congratulations. Uh, uh, and pretty successful, <laughs> right? Well, um, she's still with you. Right, she's still with you. I don't know. Yeah, I suppose you have, to, you have to love somebody to stay together that long, don't you? Right? And you have to also love what you're doing together. Uh -huh. I, and I think in, 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 in our case, and if I think back to other couples right, that are still together, right, that they, they loved what they did together. Right? They may have come together quite by accident almost because this teacher said, you dance with him, right? But if that chemistry was there, right, you're, you're fine, aren't you? And that actually are. happened to me. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Well, there you go. Didn't even know dance sport existed. Right. And one hand was grabbed, the other hand put together, and right. I didn't Fair know enough. I'd get so, a wife yeah, either. Yeah, dancing you know, is, is really a common denominator. I mean, you, if you took all the dance schools in, in the world, the amount of people that met in a dance school, right, so that must be millions, <laughs> you know, right? Right, yeah, where did you meet? Oh, we met at Fred's dance school, right, yes. Okay. Yeah. So would you say some of the, um, the, the, the keys to uh, a successful marriage uh, were learned from having a, a, maybe a successful boring partnership uh, and oh, vice versa? I, 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 I'm, I'm, undoubtedly, I, I would say if you're successful, it makes life easier. If you're not successful, it's not, <laughs> right. it, could be, it could be, you know, yeah, it could be climbing up a steep hill, couldn't it? Yeah. Uh, so I, I remember re reading um, some of the articles that you've published online, which are excellent, and I highly recommend anybody who's interested in developing their dancing study what you've, you've wrote. But some of your background, uh, one of the things that caught my eye was you said you, um, he fell off the tap of a sink because your, your mother was a professional dancer, no, right? And you got into dancing no, at the no, age. No, because when I was young, yeah, my, my mother was a professional dancer all her life from the day she left school and she had a, a dance school and everything, right? Uh, and I, of course, I was then, I had no chance. I, I was put into, into ballet, into tap, into, into ballroom, into Latin, everything. And I said one day, I said, I, I'm, not, I'm not doing any tap dancing anymore. She said, well, I said, because I, I fell into the sink. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, uh, yeah, so, yeah. So, so she was very encouraging with your dancing, of course? Oh, like, like, you know. Very, yeah. almost to the point where I nearly resisted. Okay. Because I also wanted to play a lot of sport, and I was quite good at sport, so I used to... Like what, what sports? Uh, rugby, cricket, swimming, right, foot, and, and soccer, of course, as you call it over here, right? So I represented my school in rugby, football, cricket, and swimming. 
Oh, wow. Okay, so your mum's a professional dancer, really strongly pushing yeah, you in but, one direction. But I, I, what I had to do for was that, as you know, kids can be very cruel, right? So when I went to school, I didn't want to be known as the boy who goes dancing, no. right? So I had to prove myself as well on the sports field as well. So I see, uh, I see. So that's what I did. Well, how was the, I mean, because what, what age were you when you started dancing? Um, my mother tells me I was about six. About six, yeah. So throughout your teenage years, and this is what happens with a lot of uh, young dancers I see, is they do get into the teenage years, and they've danced so hard, some of them, for 10 years that they almost resist, you know. So how did you overcome that? Especially in an era where if you did dance, I mean, people I think are a bit more accepting now if you're a male and you dance, now than back when you were probably growing right. up. So how did well, you overcome that? I think uh, when I, from, the, from the first time I got a partner to, to dance competitions as a junior, right, I loved it. Right. Whether it was the competitive sense, I mean, yeah, we, I went for lessons. I didn't know whether I should be here, there, or, or whatever, <laughs> but it, it was just an amazing experience, mm. right? And yeah, I, I with my then partner, then I won the junior, or the junior championships, right? Uh, and then when I when I started to dance with Faye, uh, it was a different ball game. We we got together, and she, she was quite cute and sensible. And she said, "Actually, now look, because she lived in Nottingham, and I lived in south of London, right? Okay. But she did move south, to get, so we we gave it a trial period, okay. right? And yeah, it worked, right?" We started to have good, quite good results. And then she, one day we sat down and said, right, we'll give ourselves five years. If we haven't won in five years, we'll finish, right? It's a deadline there. Yeah. Uh, and that's what we did. And, and we, we, we made it, we, we, did it. we did it within, just within the did five years. Did you find years. having that deadline right. a, a yeah, very good yeah. idea? But I think by the time we got to there anyway, uh, we'd, been and done and seen so much that dancing had given us, we wouldn't have given up. I, I think we would have gone on. It became an obsession then, right? Yeah, more than yeah, a, a right. passion. And, uh, and Faye, Faye was a brilliant hairdresser, and uh, she, uh, she opened a salon. We, we finished up with two salons, as well as a dancing school, What's and traveling the world, and having a family. It's a lot to manage. Uh, right, a lot to manage, yeah. And, and you had no phones to manage? You don't know uh, Google no, Calendars? No, not them, no. <laughs> no. Yeah, so it was, a, it was quite a, hec a hectic life, but it, mm. that's what we chose. Of course. Uh, how, what was your father's relationship like to you like, with, especially with dancing uh, f as, as a son and dancing? Oh, he was, he was very encouraging. He, he was the director of an engineering company, and his fame, his fame to dancing was the day he mastered the fishtail in the quick step. Okay, so he was a dancer too? No, he, he just took a medal. I think he took a bronze. Oh, right, okay. So, so not a dancer, but he did a medal. No, no, right. <laughs> Yeah, so, but, so, so he, but he loved the, uh, the entourage that traveled around with all the, the competitive events, you know. Uh, and, you know, I mean, you know, we'd be dancing against these couples, but, but the parents would get them, they'd be at the bar, right, <laughs> drinking up and talking about the football while we were dancing on the floor. Right? So, that's, so that's quite unique, I must say, because often, um, you know, with myself and my wife running a studio, we often find uh, you can have a very supportive parent, and then the other one is just against it altogether. I mean, my dad didn't even, I did ballet too for two years, and, and he just did not, he didn't come at all, right? He was like, he's dancing around a bumblebee outfit, he, I'm not going to go and watch him. The minute I started forum dancing, the one thing he said to me was, he goes, I said, Dad, I'd like to really try something with this forum dancing. And he, and he goes, do you still like girls? And I said, of, of course. He goes, okay, then, no problem. <laughs> um, but he came to everything after that, you know, and it's quite rare to have that. And so did you... Did you find yourself, you know, sort of hitting the parent lottery in a way because that can detract a lot of people from pursuing their dreams? No, as I said, no, I, I, only had, I only had maximum encouragement. Maximum encouragement, yeah. yeah. So that's a good takeaway. Yeah. Um, your daughter, Cherry, um, did she follow in any dancing footsteps at all? Uh, she, she took medals uh, in ballroom Latin and she did ballet, Cicchetti ballet. Uh, but when she got to about 12, 13, she didn't want to go into that, that sort of line of business. She didn't, I think she could see the dance world, the dancing was quite, 
quite a hectic lifestyle, yeah. right? If you really went into it, so she 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 went on a different path, right? So, yeah. yeah so she's uh, so she's done very well in her life. The only tragedy she had was losing her husband, of course. But oh. right, but uh, otherwise she's done really really well. What about yourself? What what hardships did yourself you and Faye face as you were, as you were going throughout this this journey together? I mean, what hardships seen, did yeah, we find? Yeah, I know the first hardship we had was coming home from honeymoon and the milkman knocked on the door for us to pay for the milk. We never had enough money to pay for the milkman. <laughs> that was one hardship. Uh, Choosing lessons or milk. <laughs> right, yes, right. Uh, no, I can't, honestly, Vaughan, I can't honestly say that we had any hardships. I mean, we had, the, you know, the usual family things when you lose parents and all that jazz, but... No, I, I can't say that we had any major things that we, I can think about or remember. Well, that, I would say that would be part of your attitude then, the way you look at things. Like, you, you know, to become a, a great dancer or a champion, you must have the ability, I suppose, to have an attitude like that to an extent. Would, would you agree? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I agree. I, I think uh, what motivated both Faye and I was uh, that we knew where our goal was mm. and that was we were determined to meet that whether it was winning the british or the worlds or whether it was making the hair, hair salons a success or the studio that's what we, we worked on for that right and yeah at times it was rather difficult did you ever want to quit or just go i'm done with no, any of it I, I i did i did eventually after many years after retiring uh and then you know, going on to the committee of the Imperial and eventually becoming chairman of the faculty uh, of, the, of the Imperial, chairman of the BDF, chairman of the B and founder of the BDFI. Then it began to get a bit heavy. The, the pressure was getting there. Right. You know, I was getting back from meetings, sitting in the office until two and three, typing everything, getting everything. Got to be at the airport at seven o'clock because I'm teaching in Germany. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> And eventually, one day I thought, there has to be a, a different life mm. to this, this pressure. And I thought to myself, you know, what more have you got to achieve? You, you've won all the things you wanted to win. Uh, you've brought a family up successfully. You, you know, you've got grandchildren, right? And I then suddenly thought, my father and my father-in-law both retired and within two years, they both passed away. Now, I was now just in my 60s, and, right, so I'm thinking, no, this is not right. So one day, we were getting ready to go to the studio, and Faye came down in, into the kitchen for us to go into the studio, and I said, I've made a decision. She said, what's that? I said, I think we're going to retire, and we're going to move to Australia. She said, you must be mad. <laughs> anyway. You're the convicts. <laughs> uh, uh, well, you know, we'd been to Australia several times, you know, for doing working, right? Yes. And of course, our closest, one of our two of our closest friends, Robert and Helen Ritchie. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, that's how we came to go to west of Melbourne, right? So when we arrived there, and then about eighteen minutes, two years later, our daughter and husband and family came out. So that, and we're still here nearly twenty years later. Wow. Okay. So you're still still keeping uh, keeping active. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. As active as I want to be. What do you What do you think is the most important thing dancing's given you, or things? Uh, for my age, I think it's given me posture. It's given me confidence. Um, what else has it given me? It's given me a, a wonderful, loving wife that still, you know, that still loves me. I think. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, I, We're always passing the test. Right, oh, yeah, well, I, I, I'm, I'm under the pump all, all day and every day, but I pa <laughs> by the end of the day, I usually pass the test. Yeah. Yes, uh, yeah, so I think confidence and, and yeah, and, and I, I think how, lu how lucky we are, actually, mm. right, to have sold up in, in England, sold up the businesses, sold up the studio and all that moved. It's quite a, it's quite a major thing to do. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, and, um, Especially later in life. Yeah. You've got all your connections. Right. And so, yeah. A great, a great dancer's born or trained? There are a few that are born to dance, and there are a few 
that, are, that have the talent that you can train. And then there are the ones that have no talent who try the hardest to do what you want them to do, right? Uh, yes, so the ones that you train, yeah, they, they've got, they've got, there are certain limits. Now, I read in a book uh, once that, and it was similar to the question you've just asked, it was a sports book. And they were talking about how some athletes are extremely good and they can, their reflexes are extremely fast. And there are others that are slow or there are some that are average. And it was all due to, and I, but I, apologize, I can't remember the, 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 the chemical name, but there's a certain chemical in the muscle, in the muscle system that if you've got a, a good percentage of that, you've got this talent, you've got the ability for, for reflexing, retard or whatever. ATP maybe? I, but I, anyways, I, I can't remember what it was. Uh, you know, at my age, I'm allowed to have a bit of memory. Well, that's stuff. fair enough, you know. <laughs> but um, it exists. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then some are average, so you can train them to be quite good. And some of them, they just can't make it. Right? So they're always going to be sort of lagging behind. But sometimes I find those those lessons are very rewarding when you see such a little bit of, 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 breakthrough. A, of a breakthrough, a little bit of an improvement. I yeah? suppose that is the, the win, isn't it, as a coach, yeah. as you start to see yeah. these breakthroughs. You know, it's different, isn't it? Okay, you get the champions come in for lessons and you're coaching them. You're trying to get something extra out of them or to cure a, a, a problem. Like Tiger Woods, might, he's, he's just reconstructed his swing yeah, at yes. his age, right? So he, he had a coach do it for him. He didn't teach him golf, he had a coach. And that's how I think it goes. And then lower down the screen, you are coaching and teaching. And then at the lower stage, you are teaching. So you're teaching at the lower end and then you work your way yep. up to fine tuning. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where the differences are 1%, but they, and they take longer to sort right. of master, right, right, because of those differences. Right. So is that, that, is that the, the, I guess, can you, can you spot that? Because I guess this is always the question is, is you know, is, is, is it born or trained? And, and it's, it's a bit double-edged sword because you get people that surprise you. Right, they come out of no, well, nowhere and you're like, yeah. oh, I did not quite expect you to turn around to be so proficient. Yeah, right. um, so can you spot, are there certain attributes you can spot that people have, you know, discounting the ones that's like, you know, that, that's not going to happen for them, but, but are there attributes you can see? No, I, I, I don't know how, to be honest, quite how to answer that. But what I do know is that we definitely have what I call studio dancers or competitive dancers. Right, okay. You could, in the studio, you think, God, I can't be beaten. Oh, they look so good. On the competition floor, you, you, they dissolve. You can't see them. They're so not like there. the nerves get to them. The, yeah, they well, can't whatever. They can't, yeah. It's like they, they can practice, but they, as you say, they, it's not, they, they can't go on stage and perform. So can't translate, yeah. yeah. Um, you get other people that, that are a bit sticky in, in the studio, right? They get on the competition floor and hey boy, we're here, right? Yeah. And, and, and they come alive. Can that be taught? And, and personality, you see? Okay. It's all, you've got to have personality, haven't you? You mentioned charisma, actually, in one of your articles. Yeah. You're saying, saying right. you know, the attributes of it a is, dancer. It is, isn't it? You know, every time we stepped onto the floor, we, we, it wasn't the fact that we were competing. As, as well, we were trying, yeah, what were we trying to, in a way, we're trying to entertain. Right, okay. All right? Uh, so uh, we wanted everybody to enjoy our dancing, right? Mm. Uh, and if they didn't, we didn't win. <laughs> uh, yeah. So you know, I was I was told if there if there are seven judges, you've only got to convince five of them, and you're home. <laughs> yeah. I found in in some of the videos that I've been doing with Bore and Mastery that that often it, that's missed out for people is, uh, and it's not necessarily the coach's fault, but that translation between what you've learnt in a lesson to then being able to execute it under the duress of an exam or a competition is a big gap there for people. Yeah. It's like, I'm really nailing this in the studio by myself when no one's watching, yeah. um, or in a lesson, doing great, and then it just dies. Yeah. And, uh, and there's a big gap there. And so would you have any advice for people who'd like to help translate that from one to the other? And you know, of yeah, course- The, practice, the only advice for what you can give them is in a lesson is to, is to convince them that what they're doing now in the studio, they've got to produce or find a way of producing on the floor. I'm not a psychiatrist. I wish I was sometimes, but I think most of them are. I don't know, sometimes it seems like that when you- Most of them are nuts themselves. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
But you, you do have to try sometimes to get almost inside those, those couples to see really what are they thinking. You know, you say to them, turn left and they have to think about it, right? Or turn right and you can see them, they're thinking about it, right? So you know, you, you know you're, you're, you're up a creek without a paddle, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> right. So, <laughs> yeah, but you have to try to, to, to make them, so, so, you know, there are different ways that you can, you can put it. You, you, you forget the actual technical jargon, right? And you try to use all sorts of methods of coming through. And it doesn't matter what you say or what you do, if you, can, if you get 1% of, of improvement, right? And of course, that, and that takes quite some time. Sure. In, right. um, in the dance sport world, is there anything you're seeing that you're not liking, whether it's adjudicating competitors? Yeah, the first thing I don't like about dance sport is sport. <laughs> yeah, I see the word itself, right? right? Yeah, OK. Yeah. Um, I've heard you mention that before, a long time ago, yeah. and it always stuck with me. Well, we can thank our German friends for that. They started that because without that, they couldn't get government assistance. Ah, right? okay. So that's where it all started, back in the early 50s, right? Uh, but anyway, it's, 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 it'll probably be in the dictionary soon. What are you seeing in the dance sport world that you're not liking? In the sense of, of, of couples dancing and performance, right, some of the things that we said during the earlier part of, of, of our instructional part of the, the video, is that some of the dancing I, I feel is, is not conducive to what I was brought up with and what I believe in for ballroom dancing. I am not an old-fashioned person, and I, and I believe you have to have progress, but we, we could have made the same progress without the athleticism mm. that is in there. Uh, then your question was about adjudicating. Uh, who am I to complain about the adjudicating? When I go on the floor, I pass my opinion, mm -hmm. right? If other judges go on the floor, they pass their opinion, right? You may not agree with that opinion, right? That's why you have a But panel. that's why we have a panel of, right. of seven or 11, right? That is. And there was a third item you asked me about. Well, it's just more just your general thoughts because one of the things that struck me so... You're pushing me about politics, aren't you? Well, well I don't mind getting your opinion right. on that, but, but I remember, you, I guess the thing for me that I, that I have... The, by the way, this is, I was so nervous about doing this with you because of the respect that I have for where you've been, what you've done, and just who you are. And, since, and one of the things that struck me was since you said, since 1949, I've seen every champion dancer. Oh, yeah. And to me, that's like, that's such an era of development in dancing um, of, as to fundamentals staying very similar, but so much change right. happening too. Right, so, what, so from those four, late 40s, early 50s, right, mid to mid 50s, what was the main change? Was, was the hold? Hold. Right. If I stand up, mm -hmm. <clears throat> it was more like that. That's right. Okay. And the girl's elbows were usually there. That's right. Okay. And you can see some very famous photographs where the girls are really yes. tucked in on a Spanish drag, looking like that. So the first thing that changed after that, it, it developed, was uh, it started to to get to about there, right? Uh, and that's where it's sort of the 50s and, and, the, and, the, and the 60s, right? Yeah, and the other things that changed was choreography got more advanced. Uh, I mean, the guys like the, the, the champions of the 1949, 1950, the, the Wally Friars and the Len Scribners and the Henry Kingstons and the Sonny Binnicks, their, their material was very, very simple. Mm. I mean, a triple lock got, you know, in the quick step, would get a would get a, a clap. Wally Fryer was the first one to introduce a sort of a syncopated quick step with oh. with side chassis, yeah. and, and he was my my junior coach, right, Wally Fryer. And uh, yeah, he's, he he showed, he showed me the the show, you know, like quick and quick and quick, and quick yeah. and quick and quick, right? Yeah. yeah, all that jazz. And then he took me to the tailor because this is how they educated you how to duck, how to dress, right? Very good. I, and he went to the tailor and he said, I want his trousers that wide so that when he flickers, his trousers flap. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's a so, great way to get pants made. <laughs> yeah, right. So those were the changes. Um, the, the, the girls' dresses changed a bit. Then we got to those horrendous dresses, which were so big, but you know, you sort of- Like, like yeah, to, to wade get, through them? Yeah, to, get, to wade through them. <laughs> and I, I noticed recently- And on, they were high uh, too, right? Uh, recently on, um, was it on Facebook? 
I think it was Peter Smith, right? Uh, there was a picture of Faye and I, someone had put on it, it was one of these big dresses. And he said, yes, it, it, uh, what was his words? He said, yeah, he said, yeah we, we certainly had a lot to get through in those days, didn't we, right? Yeah. No, it, it wasn't um, him, it was, um, uh, anyway. memory's gone again. That's right. okay. Yeah. So anyway, that, but, that was true. Sometimes, you know, you, you really got it tucked with, between your legs, right? Sometimes with, the, with, with all those, those changes, I mean, I think I remember seeing Richard Gleave saying something about, you know, is all um, evolution progress, right? Because things evolve naturally. Mm, but yeah. is it progress? And that's a really good point, right? Like, so where dancing's going, like the future of it, where do you see it potentially going? Is it, is it heading in a direction that sort of needs to return to its, a lot of the original roots, so to speak, you know? But like, what would be some of the future forecasts you could see happening for dancing? It's a very difficult question, actually. I, okay, we, we've had that, how we've evolved since those, since the 40s, right? To the, through the 50s and the 60s. And as I said earlier, the 80s to me were the best. 80s and 90s, yeah. Were, were the best era of all time. Uh, but then, of course, can I just sidestep a minute? Of course you can. I remember once watching a final of that in the 19th, when it was Blackpool or something, and all those famous stars, the Hiltons, the Woods, that yes. used to go and all that were dancing. And, and, I, and I said to Peter Eggleton, I said, Peter, I said, that's the best, the best final, the best era I've ever seen. Really? And Peter went, mm, I'm, I'm not so sure. I said, Peter, I think we trained them. Mm, you could be right. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, and I think you now the responsibility, where I, where I, and I've come a long way around, but the responsibility of the coaches of the future, it's in their hands right. to a degree in ballroom. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure whether they have, whether the, whether the Latin coaches have control. Uh -huh. I think because they, the, some of these Latin dancers, you know, I think they, they produce so much choreography of their own. But, I've noted that um, you know there's this group on, on, on the, that got together all the famous coaches, which I am also a member, but I can't contribute much because of my geographical location yes. now. But they've been uh, hinting that they've got to simplify the Latin, right? For example, the, the, the more together dancing, and apparently at the recent match championships that is getting better. So hopefully. Well, that's coming better. But I do feel that the coaches of the future, uh, yeah, they, they, they've, got, they've got to know what they're doing. Right? And, and, and I'm, I think there's a different approach to, to people going in for a lesson with the coach now uh, to what we had. Meaning? We went into a lesson with a preconceived idea of what we wanted to do. Okay. Right. Miss Bradley, we've got this problem, or Sonny Bennett, we've, we've got this, we've got a problem here, can you help us with it? Right, so let's have a look. Right, now they come into a lesson, what are we going to do? Well, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll do some walls. Right, there's no connection. So I have to say to them, I said, have you practiced this week? Yes. I said, what didn't feel good? Oh, it felt all right. <laughs> right? So, it's not really good feedback. Yeah, it's not good feedback, right? Yeah. So. So you need the feedback yeah, as a coach? Of course you do. The, yeah, it's, got a, it's a two-way thing, it's isn't it? Two-way thing, yeah. Uh, it's, there's, nothing, there's nothing worse than, than, than trying to tell them something and, and, and nothing happens. So there's, a, there's a blank reaction. Yes, yeah. Yeah, so I think uh, the way that, that, and I think the way a coach also takes control of a lesson to a degree. Okay. I mean, he's not a dictator and all that, but he's, he's there to ensure that they are doing everything technically correctly, musically well done, and uh, yeah, and not putting too much attention on, oh, we'll change that choreography. Because we'll, right. you can't do that, we'll change it to that. So right. one of the important things then for the coaches of the future to help shape dancing into a way that's, you know, well, to, to keep it progressing in a way that's, I suppose, congruent with original technique, right? Like, would it be wise then for coaches now to really keep fundamentals at the fo core focus of their teaching, like what? I think you've got to. Yeah. I think you've got to. I, I, I would imagine that 
tennis coaches, swimming coaches, or athletic, uh, running coaches still have their fun basic fundamentals yeah. to work to. Yeah, you right? don't swim a different way to different yeah, style. Yeah, exactly. Uh, like yeah, with your arms. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, and, and you know, if I wanted to be a concert pianist, they'll, they'll, they'll make me do all the scales correctly and how to use all that mm. fingers and hands and wrists and all that. Uh, so why, why, why is it we throw everything, we throw the technique book and all the, those theories out of the window, right, for an athletic performance? It, it, won't, it won't happen in the long term. Right. It's a short-term solution. It's a short-term game. So what you're seeing is athleticism versus the fundamentals. So it's like just move, get going, yeah. make it look showy, so to speak. Right. Right. Um, uh, hurt the ladies back, and off you go. Yeah. Um, I mean, when you when you look at some of the things you see on YouTube now, where the girls are almost laying on the floor in, in a beautiful ballroom gown, and the guy's over as though he's going to commit something <laughs> that he shouldn't be doing, <laughs> right? And they call that ballroom dancing. Yeah. Right. So they're, they're doing a big disservice. And, and, you know, if I was a sponsor of those, I'd be thinking, what the hell are they doing? Is that being encouraged in, inside, outside of just, say, specific coaches? And because YouTube's such an influence in modern dancing, like, like even the, 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 the older students that I teach will come in and say, I've been watching YouTube and I've seen this and that. And so everybody's looking at that thinking, this is what we should do. But it seems to me there's two factions that are pushing, one is pushing let's get into Olympic style of dancing, which means look, make it look good at all costs. And then there seems to be like what I would say, how I was raised with coaching, which was from Penny DeCow, and she learned from Alex Moore for, for 10 years in London, and she was always so grounded in technique. And then we had yourself and, and Ang Lee. Yeah. And so, so they had this, this mixture of technique, and then also here's how show works. Right, okay, right. Well, what I was gonna say that you can't win on technique or only, or choreography only. Okay. You, you have to have a blend. Right. right, and and actually, if your techniques and fundamentals are good, the, the amount of choreography that is available, leadable choreography right. that is available to you, is the, the, you know it's a, it, it's so it's easy to, to develop, right? right? Uh, but again, there are it, it, with choreography and, and coaching as well, uh, is that. I think a coach is, must be aware too of the physical build of a couple. Now, if I've got two, two roundy, roundy, you know, round tub of us, I don't give them an awful lot of outside partner stuff, right? Right, fair enough, <laughs> like, yes. You know, or anything too difficult, but then if you get someone that's nice and slim and all yeah. that, you, yeah. Okay. So I think, I think all that kind of thing is, is you, you've got to assess that. Uh, and to, to be a coach that is in control of the lesson and not the, not the, co not the, the pupil in control. Fair enough. But well, what would you say to someone who wants to start competition? Because it's often the progression. Most people don't know it exists to begin with, like my, I didn't. And then, and, then it's, and then they get into a studio, they do a couple of lessons, they start to move into medals. They're like, I'd like to get on the competition floor. What, what are some of the habits that they should develop or things they should practice? Like, you know, obviously doing a lesson. How long should they practice? Should they do as many competitions as possible? Like one coach only? Like, you know, some of those at best that, things to start Okay. With. At that stage, one coach only. Competitions, yes. We've got these wonderful competitions now. Uh, the recreational dancing, right? Where they don't have to have tail suits and, and evening dresses. Uh, but I, from, from the ones that I've judged and seen is that they, they could be guided into looking a little more glamorous, glamorous uh, yeah. instead of wearing jeans and, and uh, open neck shirts and things like that. I think, I think we have to keep a little bit of the tradition. I of, think so too. Yeah. Uh, so, yes. But and in then, terms of practice. Then when, they, when they develop, I think you can't pressure them to practice at that, at that stage. I think some degree, you will know how keen they are when they say, oh, can we come and practice or can we use the student, right? Uh, and you'll know who, who, who the ones that really want, right? uh, who are keen enough to do it. Uh, and then they'll, they'll continue, right? And yes, it's a, it's a great thing that, that they've introduced that recreational. Right, uh, thing so you see that's a positive it, you will, you know, Okay, let's say there's, there's 200 of them. In, in, in Australia now, for example, just talking hypothetically, right? If 10% of them move into the, into the higher echelons of, of competitive dancing, 
done a good job. Great service, yeah. yeah. So you've got 20 couples that, that want to go right the way through, something. right? So yeah, there's got to be a sort of a, a feed. You're, you're mm. not going to keep everybody. It's like no, no. when when I, when it's we had our, when we had our dance studios, right? I used to say to the managers, right? Uh, which was in those days, you, you'd get a hundred come for a new class, wow. and and I'd say to them, oh, she said, actually, we had a hundred in last night. I said, well, that's great. I'll pay the rent. I, <laughs> and then I said, okay. I said next week there'll be ninety. The following week there'll be eighty. I said, and you'll round off at about sixty. And that's how it used that's to go. That's a 40% decrease, right. yeah. yeah. But that's how it used to but go. that's what happens. And of that percentage, you got a, another percentage that went on to take medals. You had another percentage that became studio stalwarts. You know, they supported everything, but didn't want to know about that. They just wanted to come and dance yes. and enjoy the, 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 the atmosphere and the social side. Yeah, so it's all about percentages, really. Right. So, so for a, for um, like a, a couple of a couple more questions, if that's okay with you. Um, but with regards to being a studio owner, like, do you see the role of uh, uh, the the business world has changed a lot? I mean, fundamentals to running a business still remain pretty much the same. But the business of running dance studios is that like dying? Is that where is that going? I don't know, but I know one thing. If I had my life over again, I wouldn't run a dance school. Yeah, that, I was actually going to ask you that question. If you uh, were to do it again, what would you do? Only because, I th only probably because I had other priorities to a degree, okay? Yeah, we needed our own studio. We needed somewhere to teach and all that. But of course, we run it with a social side as well, right? Okay. Uh, um, so we had a social staff. And we had our so uh, the competitive side of the studio. So you wouldn't run a studio at all, or you just run like? Uh, I don't. I think if I had my time over again, I think I'd rent floor space. <laughs> rent floor space and just teach. Yeah. If I if but as I should say, that's what I, I think I would do. Sure. Right? Uh, of course, you, know, you haven't got all the advertising to think about. You haven't got the wages to think about, all the tax and all that. And yeah. So. Uh, but the, part of your question was, where do I think it's going now? Um, I th think it's holding its own. Um, and I think in different areas, different climates, right? Uh, you will find it, it, it fluctuates to a degree from one to another. But then I think to myself, now why are they doing it? Why are so many people now doing it in Taiwan, in Hong Kong, right. in Korea? These places get damn hot, right? But they're all beautifully air-conditioned studios. <laughs> interesting, because right. I find that interesting because to me, studios feed competition, right? It's like there's a direct link, do not pass go, you fill up a studio, percentages will decrease, but the numbers of competition samples right. will increase if they're looked after, right? So I see that as a, as a correlation. So then I look at competitive numbers as a, as a, as a competition globally, and, and you're in the, you've, you've been out adjudicating around the world, like a, is dance sport, so to speak, I don't know you hate that term, but I'll use it as the reference, are numbers increasing, like globally? Like oh, are yeah. more people they dancing are. now than they were 10, 20, 30 yeah, years ago? Yeah, they're, so, they're, so it's more yeah, popular now yeah. in that sense. Must, it must be, isn't it? I mean, only to how many countries are now okay. are up and, up and running. They're right? all loving the air conditioning. I mean, we, we get, I mean, even now Sri Lanka is a member of the BDFI. Right. Right? They've, got, they've got competitors. They, and, and listen, what about Spain? Now. When, when we were around there, well, Spain, they don't do any ballroom like that. We just they're producing, like, they're producing champion after champion now, right? Oh, yeah, there you go. So uh, it's wonderful. I mean, and, and when the when the Eastern Bloc opened up, mm. you know, after you know when, you got, when the, the Russian Maybe. thing all collapsed and the wall came down, right? I mean, that ballooned, didn't it? Right. I mean, there's so many competitors then. And, you know, I always remember, and I quote this so often, that when, that, when the Berlin Wall came down, the, f the first two or three people that got stepped through the wall were obviously were, the reporters were waiting there to interview them. And this guy said, now, what was the first thing you want to do now you've got through to freedom? He said, we want to go to the Blackpool Dance Festival. <laughs> right? That was his first word. Really? Yeah. And from That's that, awesome. from that, the Blackpool Tower Company, right, uh, took, they found this couple, right, and they paid for them, they took them up to Blackpool, they let them dance on, on the floor, right, and all that, and yeah. They were Fabulous. Amazing. That's right. an amazing. Okay. What, wonderful publicity, How of course, is that for, for history? For the, for the, yeah. Wow. Uh, all right, well, I mean, this, these are some wonderful answers. Thank you very much. Just lastly, I would like to know, 
couple little things. Like, talked a lot about uh, in, in previous videos, but for this purpose of this video, what would be some um, fundamentals for a dancer to master to focus on on a consistent daily basis? It's like, okay, you got your routines, you got competition performance, you got medals, you got all that other jazz. But listen, this is this is what a, a golfer will take a nine iron and they will do two thousand swings, but they'll do it with a certain mindset and they will be really trying to make sure they ingrain a good habit, right? So, what would be some of those fundamentals in ballroom dancing? It's the same thing, isn't it? You. you, you uh, you said a golf a golf guy will take a nine iron and, uh, and practice those swings, right? Uh, a pianist will practice his scales, right? A, a dancer will, will should practice his basic fundamentals. No, don't come in straight from work, right? Put your shoes on and go straight into your routine. Right. Okay. So this right? is what I see though with yeah, people, and we yeah. tell them not to do that. Right. But what but should they, they do? They, they must come in and they must think, you know, all the things that we've talked about just stand together for a little while. Can they take two or three walks forward, two or three walks back, get to feel the sensitivities. Then if you're going to dance a little bit of waltz, make sure you just swing your natural turn or just go through a, a ba you know, the basic amalgamation of the yep. waltz, natural turn, close change, reverse turn. Just get that swing going. If it's foxtrot, you start with feather reverse turn, three okay. step. Right, whatever. And so also in terms of um, technique, footwork, right? Paramount, yeah? yeah? In yeah. the beginning, like getting that mastered would be I'd say the quicker you can do that, right, the faster you're going Absolutely, to improve with that right. being. I used to see it at my studio, they come in, so I put the shoes on, right, straight into the routine, right? Good luck. And, <laughs> and that's another word I hate too, routine. Yes, I, I had it here. Right. What are your thoughts on fixed routines? I, I hate The first them. lesson I had with you, you said, I hate routines. And I was like, I what does that mean? Well, we can dance without one? Look, 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 let me put it this way. <laughs> okay. I had a, a routine in there. Mm -hmm that thought to myself, okay, I'm at, I'm at Blackpool, I'd love to start with that, into that, and then follow it into that, right? Okay. So you had a plan. But I didn't know that, I knew there was gonna be 16, 17 other couples on the floor, and that floor might not be available, so I would change, mm -hmm. right? And I didn't have to tell Faye, I didn't have my groups numbered, I didn't like to say, like, right, we'll do group number four, or anything like oh, that. Right, yeah, yeah. I didn't have anything like that. I led, right, um, and I always relied on my old, my old my, my Victor Barrett, where he taught me, he said, you know, how to lead a lady, right? So, yeah, we changed, right? So, yes, we had a routine, but it was not a fixed routine like you see today. Yes, okay. I mean, you know, you, you stand there judging all day, and number nine, he starts there every dance, right? And he goes the same round, and, and, and it's the same routine all the way around. He has a big collision in the centre, but he won't give up his he won't routine. Give it up. No. He's going to do uh, it. And that's the other thing too is when they, when they have a collision, right? They just you know they they try to pick up the routine. They don't just relax, take up hold, and get into a swing, right? The full <laughs> because they must get into the routine. Uh, well, so so the it, it, it it restricts it restricts them in as in, in as much that then they don't become naturally together, right? It's a rehearsed performance, mm -hmm. right? Uh, some people say, oh, well, it's all about phrasing. People used to say that Faye and I were very, very musical, right? I was never conscious of, I was, but when I broke my, my, my figures down, I was automatically in eight bars or, or 16 bars because the music was so, indelibly imprinted on what I should do with the music. Okay. Right? That was the ma the music is the master. Mm -hmm. Right? The dances were designed to the music. Yeah, not the other way. All right? The music came first. The dances were put to it. So we must ne we mustn't ignore that. And so to get to that level though, because when you first told me that I actually went away and I thought I've been thinking about that ever since. It, it hits my head every day because I'm like to be able to do that, you have to have balance and you have to have good footwork. You can't, mm. can't lead something you don't know how to lead, right? So, so these is, this is why I'm hitting these tenements of fundamentals because to me, that's the golden pillar. It's mastery, right? If right. you can lead a lady into any figure that you, you want to the music at any conjunction on a comp floor, to yeah. me, that's like, that's the standard, Look, that's the best dancing. In, in the possible. old days, we used to go and practice, uh, you know, the, the dance halls were thriving, right? Like they were here, you had these big dance halls in Brisbane, you had them right, everywhere, right? And we used to go there and practice two orchestras, right? Pot of tea and a, and a, and a tea cake for two shillings and six pence. Well, there you go. Right? And tea you could dance in this beautiful ballroom. And then 
They used to have a general excuse me session. A general excuse me? What is that? Right. Means that, okay, so you got up with your wife and you danced. And if I was standing there and I thought, oh, I'd like to dance with her, I would come up and tap you on the shoulder and say, may I dance with your partner? And you would have to step away, and leave the floor, and I could... Uh, so we could, uh, we could pick up the girls, uh, and these girls would follow. We Fabulous. could dance anything, right. Okay, we weren't thinking of, of uh, extremely complicated of course, routines. Of you were dancing. <laughs> we were dancing basic, fun, you know, basics and, and name variations. Yes. Right? So a fall away, slip, pivot, double reverse, spin, right, right, and all that jazz was quite within your capabilities. Yeah, so sometimes you were delighted with what you got, and sometimes uh, you thought, oh, I made a mistake. Please tap, tap my shoulder. Someone come and tap me, please. <laughs> yeah, right. You one, made a mistake. One of the last things, like, I love... But it, what it, oh, sorry to interrupt you, but what it taught, taught us at that stage was, was lead and follow, mm. right? Was and it floor craft. Right. Because if you, were, if you were bad on the floor, there used to be a big guy standing at the end. He was the manager of, the, of Hammersmith Palace. His name was Bill Sturmey. If he saw you, anybody budging around me, Wow, really? Off. Turf, it's out. like a dance bouncer. Yeah, right. Just turf you out. Yeah. Wow. In those days, of course, it was a suit, collar and tie. Course, yeah. right? No t-shirts. No t-shirts. No, no. <laughs> so, so no sweaty armpits in those days. <laughs> <laughs> That's an amazing thing. General, excuse me, Dan. So I might try to implement that one. Yeah, That's very good. cool. Yeah. I like that idea. Yeah. Um, one of the things I'm obsessed about is I love history of things. And that's why I want to do this interview, because I think we're very blessed to, to have you around with, you, with what you know. What was your role with... Alex Moore and what was, you know, he revised the technique, I suppose, so to speak. But I've always wondered, like, sitting back then, how did, did you guys just sit around a table and, like, 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 the, the, no, like, no, like no. what is it, uh, King Arthur's Round Table, no, Alex, figure Alex, out some Alex, steps? Alex put his book together long before I, w I was even a successful junior. Mm. Um, but that's what I mean, but it was a, yeah, there's a revised right. edition but, which you wrote a forward for. But, you know, in the studio, there was Alex Moore's revised technique, right? Uh, and that's what the teachers run, that's what their examinations were based on and all that. So, uh, and then when I, when I eventually turned professional, I, I, I trained at Alex Moore Studio, not actually with Alex, with, um, uh, oh, you know, my brain for names is getting good. Elizabeth Romaine. Oh, Elizabeth Romaine, yes. She was, absolutely brilliant right and such a such a delight to, to to learn from i did my my associate my membership my fellowship and all that with her uh, so yeah and that's when alex would sometimes come in and and say you know D didn't dance that very well boy did you right? or something <laughs> like that. and then i was i remember doing i was doing the hover cross mm -hmm. and and i i, I know alex was there and i said alex i cannot understand I said, why the, the hovercross is so written? I said, because I find it rather restrictive. So, you know, because, you know, you, on the hovercross, fr from there, you know, you step across, mm -hmm. right? Yes, there, you come out. And you come out. I said, I find that a bit restrictive. I said, I, wanted, I, want, I feel that my body wants to, wants to say more in the music. So I said, I want to dance it like this. Forward, side, sorry, diagonally back, bring my partner in this way and cross my feet that way and let it overturn oh. and then come out with a feather finish. So he said, hmm, he said, that's how, I, that's how it was originally written. <laughs> so what? I said, well, why did you change it? He said, well, because, you know, it wasn't, it was too advanced. So, so technique is to be, I suppose, at a certain level interpreted to, to be able to match the, the balance, yeah, the yeah, fundamentals, I mean, so to speak, of dance. Yeah, uh, even, even Alex Moore would say, look, the technique is a minimum guide. Minimum guide? Yeah. So, and, it, and it, it's written correctly, uh, and it is, a, it is a minimum guide, but, you know, a, a dancer with, with artistic license, I can do that. So going, if, I, if I can make that look good, I'll do it. So going forward then, who do new steps get approved? Because there's this massive body of work in the early 19, say, 30s, really, the letter service moving on to Jeffrey Hearn's work, to the 2000s, and then it just sort of stops, from what I can find anyway. It, and a huge volume of work exists from Elizabeth Romaine's Q and question answer books, the technique, um, uh, Neville Boyd's books, and then you've got uh, Walter Laird, of course, and what Lorna Lee did with ISTD. So you've got a lot of a plethora of information. Yeah. And as we're talking about with dancing evolving and moving forward, who approves steps? Do new steps get made now? I mean, because movement's always occurring, 
do new things happen and who put, can it get put in? Is that even yeah, no, allowed I think, to I think, do? Okay, for example, when I was faculty chairman of the Imperial, the, uh, the ballroom branch decided to update Alex's technique. So with the permission, by this time Alex had passed away, of course, mm -hmm. But by this time, uh, I, I approached Alex's wife and I said, would you, would you mind if we updated Alex's technique? She said, no, she said, I think he would be delighted. Oh, cool. Right? So, which we did. And we, we took some figures out and we, we put a bounce fall away in, for example, mm -hmm. right? Um, uh, but we, and we took certain figures out that, that were, n that were not, never being danced anymore. Okay. Right. So that was all done in committee. So I'm sure the IDTA organisation, they would they do everything in committee or the UKA, whatever, the, whatever steps they want or, or they introduce, whether they use the Imperial book or they use... Um, do they still do this now, though? Are they still approving or improving or adding I, I anything? Think or if, if, just... if a committee thinks that there's some improvement to be made, yeah. They, so that's when they do they, it. They but but do. so on a comp floor, because this is not something that, that I do, but I'm always just wondering if there's some rogue coach out there who's who's just putting together some new variations on that technique and whacking on a comp floor and no one's saying no, anything. No. I mean, what what's new? Mm. What is new? Right. Only the, only the way that they, they, you can put things together. Yeah. I mean, so okay. The, the variations. Yeah. But as, as I said earlier, when we were doing the instructive part, some of the, some of the choreography I see today and the speed that they tried to dance it at, I, I would have broken my legs. <laughs> right? uh, and yeah, and it's not really dancing and it doesn't, it doesn't impress me anyway. All right. I think that's why sometimes if they ever look at my marks and everybody, they must think, well, He's, an, he's out of step. Well, what, what turns you off a couple immediately when you see them dancing? Like, like you look and you woof. No. Well, when I, when I, the first thing that puts me off is if they if they go into something and they're obviously, like I said earlier, haven't got the tools in their tool bag, book, tool bag to, to cope with it. They can't do it. So I've got foot faults. I've got shoulders up, right? And the and the girls, you know, can't do a heel turn or right? those things upset me immediately. As you know, when you're judging, you've only got a few seconds. So you've got four, four seconds. Of right. So bomb. It's gone. Right. So. Any th further thoughts on, no. uh, that you'd like to leave? I don't think so. You've done a great job. Thank you so much for having me here and for your time, Ed. My pleasure. Really yeah, it. my pleasure. Thank okay. You.